that we have a big shortage in counselors. This is the reason we need you guys to be open to doing uh, work across state lines. Now, I would say that there are enough people in your state that need counseling, right? Um, you look at your neighbors and your family and your, that's, I'm kind of being tongue in cheek, sort of. Um, there are a lot of people that need help, right? But it's it's not so much, you know, are there enough people in your state that need help? It's how do I get to them and how do I get the referral streams? And so you might be, it might be easier to connect with somebody in another state or they might be coming to you. Um, I don't recommend you getting licensed in many, many states. I recommend that you maybe cap it at maybe three or four. Um, here's why. Um, you have to keep up with the regulations in each of those states, and you have to keep up with those changes. And so that can be a little bit crazy making. Um, and, and they do change. And now they're changing about quarterly. The boards are changing. I track all the laws in all the states for eight professions. And, um, and, and there is a lot of change, especially right now. Um, There's some boards that may never change. I just wonder if they're even asleep there. Also, another reason to cross state lines is because there's a lot of more people getting help. Um, there's been a big increase since the pandemic and people seeking help. Um, the pandemic has really kicked over a lot of uh, hornet's nests. Uh, I, I think somebody, there's a study that said nearly 50% of adolescents have uh, symptoms that could be diagnosed as a mental health uh, disorder. And that that's significant. I mean, it was already high before the pandemic, but it really kind of exposed to our country that we really haven't equipped that generation on how to handle um, mental health and mental illness or crises, um, stress in general. So, and I know a lot of counselors, you're already carrying a lot of burden of your own life. And then uh, COVID happens and you have to go through COVID with your clients going through COVID, not having figured it out. So what telemental health will do for you is it will give you a little bit of, of distance, a little bit of space and a little bit more freedom on how to do your calendar and keep you actually physically safe from the virus. I've never caught a virus through video. Thank you. Um, I have a lot of dumb jokes and only I have to laugh at them. You don't have to laugh at them. You can laugh at me and I can't tell the difference. So there are also, a, you know, again, a lot of people in crisis um, and to answer a question about crisis, a lot of people ask, can I do crisis counseling through telemental health? And the answer is absolutely yes. In fact, it's now the preferred version of doing crisis counseling. You don't wanna tell people to um, to, to call 911 uh, and you, you can't call 911 um, because it won't work. Um, and that's for a different webinar, but um, so there's lots of reasons. So how do we address this? Uh, obviously the way to address it is to train you guys on how to do this and, and get you very comfortable with doing that. Mm-hmm.